Examples of Halakha, page 59. Halakha, outside of its present-day rabbinic context, can be understood as both biblical and rabbinic. In other words, biblical halakha is a straightforward teaching of the written Torah in accordance with plain context. On the other hand, rabbinic halakha generally begins with a biblical source text. Then, through drash or interpretation and rabbinic logic, laws are deduced, often extrapolated from one or more of the extensive rules available. Here are some examples of both types of halakha, biblical and rabbinic. No work is to be done on Shabbat. As it is written, Therefore you are to observe the Sabbath, for it is holy to you. Shmot, Exodus 31, verse 14. Here the biblical halakha states that it is forbidden to do any malacha, work, on the Sabbath. However, the rabbis deduced and legislated 39 types of forbidden activities, and then added a large number of subcategories of forbidden labors allowed on Shabbat. Males are to be circumcised, as it is written, and every male among you who is eight days old shall be circumcised throughout your generations, a servant who is born in the house or one who is bought with money from any foreigner who is not of your descendants. But a sheet, Genesis 17.12. Here the biblical halakha is straightforward. However, new rabbinic halakha is legislated through their rules of scriptural interpretation, requiring some additional actions discussed by Hillel and Shammai that included submitting to Hatavat Dambrit for Gentile converts already circumcised according to biblical halakha, or Jews already circumcised but returning from secularism to Judaism. Also, Peri'ah and Metzitzah and other customs and prayers too detailed to list here. Do not cause a fire to burn on Shabbat. As it is written, You shall not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on the Shabbat day. Shmot, Exodus 35, verse 3. From this biblical command, the rabbinic halakha is that one is allowed to keep a fire burning on the Shabbat, so long as it was started before the Shabbat began, in contrast to the biblical command to not even cause a fire to burn or be sustained on the Shabbat, which would mean that no fire should actually be consuming anything on Shabbat. Do not follow everyone into evil and the perversion of justice. As it is written, You shall not follow a multitude in doing evil nor shall you testify in a dispute so as to incline after the majority in order to pervert justice, nor shall you be partial to the poor man in his dispute. Shmot, Exodus 23, verse 2. In this classic example of rabbinic halakha, the rabbis do some creative editing by forcing the biblical halakha to reveal the oral law. They do this by striking through what they consider irrelevant, and then through interpretation, they take what is needed to support their new legislation, thus making the text say the following, incline after the majority, crossing out the phrase, you shall not follow a multitude in doing evil, nor shall you testify in a dispute so as to, and, in order to pervert justice, nor shall you be partial to the poor man in his dispute. No matter how forced the interpretation, this is still a new ordinance binding on all Israel. Supposedly under the authority of Moses, the rabbis say that we are all obligated to incline after the majority, meaning we are required to obey rabbinical majority rule when they give us their halakha on the written Torah. This was later supported in the Babylonian Talmud. Berachot 37a, also Baba Metzia 59b. Rabbi Akiva said, The halakha is determined by the majority, based on Exodus 23, verse 2. Establishing the appointed times of Yudhe Vavhe's festivals on earth. 
Again, through some creative manipulation and interpretation of the biblical text, the rabbis take biblical halakha and say that they have the authority to proclaim the times of our divine festivals, regardless of whether the proclamation is according to Yehovah's set times for them or not. Here is the passage as I have translated it directly from Hebrew. These are the appointed times of yud Hey vav Hey, holy convocations which you shall proclaim them at the times appointed for them. Leviticus 23, verse 4. In Hebrew, the rabbis change the object them, otam, the holy festivals, and read it as the subject, you yourselves, atem, meaning all of you rabbis. In short, they suspend the rules of Hebrew grammar and make the object, the divine festivals, the subject, the rabbis. After this, they take the word, Bamoadam, which means, in their appointed times, and entirely ignore it. Little tricks like these force the text to prove that Yehovah and heaven itself must yield to them, the rabbis who say that they have authority from Moses and heaven to set the timing of the festivals as they see fit. Thus, Leviticus 23, verse 4, is manipulated to read as follows. These are the appointed times of yud He vav He, holy convocations which you rabbis shall proclaim them. They cross out in the times appointed for them. In the Babylonian Talmud, Rosh Hashanah 25a, we read, It says three times, which you shall proclaim them, O Tom, but read it, you yourselves, Atem, shall proclaim. Rabbi Akiva, speaking to Rabbi Joshua, says in Rosh Hashanah 25a of the Babylonian Talmud, The text says, You, 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 three times to indicate that you may fix the festivals, even if you err inadvertently, you, even if you err deliberately, you, even if you are misled. This is just a sampling of some of the laws that are categorized as rabbinic halakha, for all Israel to obey, because through the presumed logic of the rabbis, we must incline after the majority. Briefly, here are a number of other laws, halachot, plural for halacha, that are derived from the written Torah and subjected to the rabbinic filters of logic and or drash. The law against a man remarrying his former wife who has already been married and thus subsequently divorced according to Deuteronomy 24, 1-4. The rabbis developed a workaround and permitted what the Torah forbade by reinterpreting the law of Halitza, and then taught conditions for the forbidden, Yevomot 12a. The rabbis have the right to annul any marriage which is not in conformity with their ruling, Yevomot 90b, a ruling that the study of the laws about sacrifice are as if one